house of God tonight. Amen? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand go before the Lord in prayer this Hallelujah. evening. Let's invite the presence of the Lord tonight yes. into this service. Let's allow God to just have his way tonight. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. We ask your blessing tonight, Father, upon every life, every soul, God, every need, Lord. We just lift it up to you tonight, Lord. Be exalted in this service, Lord. Be praised. Be glorified. We ask your will to be done tonight, Lord. As we lift our cup, asking you to fill it, Lord, one more time. Have your way, Lord. For you are God, and there's none like you, Lord. You are worthy tonight of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, Lord. Have your way tonight. We worship you. We glorify you. And we thank you, Lord, tonight. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's Amen. turn to page 119 tonight. Let's sing, He Abides. He Abides. Page 119.
creation tonight, Lord, in you. We just worship you and give you the glory tonight, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. We need your touch, God. We just come to you tonight, Lord. Touch us one more time, Lord. Have your way, God, tonight. Refresh, renew, restore, God. We pray by the power of the Comforter tonight, Lord. And take time, Lord. you, Lord. There is no power that can free you. Someone is good to be in church tonight. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Good that we can anchor on Jesus tonight. Amen. Amen. Sure foundation this morning, uh, this, e this evening. Praise the Lord. But I'm thankful for everyone that is here. Just let God have his way. Let Jesus speak to you tonight. Amen. Draw closer to him. Those of you online, we welcome you. Again, we're a church all about Jesus Christ. Amen. And having a personal relationship with him. Coming to a saving knowledge of our Savior. So just let Jesus speak to you this evening. Praise the Lord. Be mindful of our schedule this week. We do have our service at Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We do have a special speaker coming in. And there will be a special speaker on Sunday morning. So if you can make it, come and join us. We'd love to have you. And bring someone with you. Invite someone. Let someone know that there's a place that they can hear about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, if our usher, John, <laughs> will come and help us receive our Sunday evening, our Thursday evening offering and tithe. We know that all Christians pay their tithe and faithfully give them the offering. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's pray for the offering. Father, we thank you for your goodness Amen. and for your blessings. Thank we ask you. once again that you bless both the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
you Lord we lift our hearts to you tonight Lord we lift our voices to you tonight Lord for you are worthy to be praised amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah hallelujah amen so good to lean on Jesus tonight amen good to lean on Jesus tonight good to be in the house of the Lord and we are thankful for this opportunity to be in church tonight amen we're glad you're here with us this evening. Let's just open our hearts to the Lord, to His Word. Let's just let God be God. Amen? Amen. 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 I believe if we would just let God be God, amen, things would be, things would be all right. Amen? amen? Hallelujah. God knows what He's doing tonight. Amen? Yes. God's still on His throne. He amen. still knows what He's doing tonight. And we just let God be God. And uh, let Him be in charge. Let Him lead. Let Him guide. And amen. Just put your life in his hands tonight. Thank God for this opportunity to be in church, be in prayer for one another. Uh, pray, pray for Darren. He wasn't feeling well tonight. And so I'm not sure what, what it is. He has got a real problem or uh, just ate some bad Mexican food or something. I don't know. But, but pray for our brother. Pray for our sisters. Pray for one another. Amen. 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 Pray for one another. And we're, we're excited about church tonight. And of course, this weekend, be in prayer for our guest preacher coming on Sunday morning. Be here with us. Invite someone to church. Invite someone to the house of God with you. Amen. Amen. Uh, we should, I don't, uh, can't stress that enough. We should always be constantly thinking and looking for opportunities to invite someone to the house of God. People need Christ. They Amen. need the Lord. Amen. They need the Lord. And, you know, there's a lot of churches still closed down right now Amen. that aren't even meeting and aren't even coming together. And there's so many people we've talked to that are just... They're just looking for some place to go. People are getting uh, cabin fever, and they, they want to get out. They want to go somewhere, and there's a lot of places, and we're not trying to take people, but, hey, our church is open. We can provide for them a place where they can come and worship God. Amen? Amen. Amen. In, 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 in a building, in a place where other believers are, and just not sitting at home on a, on a sofa eating potato chips or right something. It's far better being in the house of God. Amen. 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 Far better being here. And so let's continue to invite people and just give them the card, put it in their hand, invite them to church. However, just get the word out. Tell people. Get the word out and tell people. And, uh, and uh, God is good. God is good. There's a lot of people that are, that are looking for something. Amen. Looking for something in the Lord. And so we have what they need, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Appreciate your prayers for my dad. My dad's already back here, had surgery uh, yesterday. Praise God. Already in church. You can't, keep a, you can't keep a good man down. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's read from the book of Romans tonight. Won't take a lot of time. Romans, just one verse of scripture for our text. Romans chapter 16 and verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Reverend, will you please stand and pray tonight, sir? Well, Father, thankful for your goodness, for this opportunity to be in your house once again. Jesus' name. Bless and move in a special way. We look to you for a blessing, for a moving of your spirit, and for a touch to your preacher as he delivers your word. Just have your way once again. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Excuse me, I just had to make an adjustment. Amen. Read it one more time. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach tonight with the help of the Lord for a little while on this first thought. And that is the God of peace. The God of peace. Here in the wonderful book of Romans, in the final chapter of this letter, 
we have Paul's parting words to the church at Rome. And he, in this uh, passage, and as was his custom, he would leave or end the letter with encouraging words and what we would refer to as pleasantries, so to speak. He was giving salutation, giving greetings, and giving encouragement to the believers that were there in Rome. We know that a church had been established. We know that, we should say, people were added to the church in Rome. People got saved in Rome. There were believers there. They were having church in their house. They were meeting in their homes. The Bible says, as Paul would write in one part, greet the church that is in their house. They had uh, begun assemblies and meeting together. Many people were reached with the good news of Jesus there in Rome. And I think it's noteworthy tonight that during this time, Rome was not a holy city. Rome was not exactly a city of morals, a city uh, even with godly leadership, uh, ruling over and reigning the people, really quite the opposite. Rome and the Roman people were ungodly. They, many of them were anti-Christ. They were against Christ, against the Lord. It would be even in Rome that Paul would eventually uh, die under house arrest there because he appealed unto Caesar uh, after being convicted of preaching the gospel. And, but noteworthy, it, nonetheless, that even in the place that was not holy, there was holy people, amen, amen. because they were following Jesus. Even in a place that did not have a high moral standard, there were people that had a high moral standard. Amen. Amen. Even in a place that did not have godly leadership, there were leaders that were godly. Amen. Amen. And I believe tonight we see a very, a very good example that even though and no matter how bad things were in Rome, it did not change the fact that God was good, even in Rome. Amen? Amen. And I believe this is kind of the sentiment of Paul in writing uh, in the first part of Romans, where he said, where sin abounds, uh, the grace of God does much more abound. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Even where there was much sin, and even there was much uh, just wickedness going on, it did not diminish the fact or the reality of God's power. Amen. Amen. And we may, we may be tempted to think that sometimes because there's a lot of wickedness or a lot of evil things happening or bad things going on in certain places. Uh, we may think that uh, evil runs God out of places or uh, the, the higher the crime rate, the, uh, the, the, the lower the power of God or the presence of God in some way. It doesn't mean that at all. Amen. Amen. You see, devil, the devil's not going to run God out of any place. Amen. Amen. And even though evil and wickedness may prevail in a certain part, uh, it does not mean that God's power is diminished. Uh, he is near. Amen. He is close. Uh, even in places where it's sad and, and to read about crime and wickedness, even in those places as sad as it might be to, to consider that, uh, that these people are living certain ways and doing things to themselves, uh, yet all they have to do is turn and look up and call upon God and God will help them because He's only a prayer away tonight. Amen. 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 He's only ever a prayer away. Even those people that are lost tonight and maybe you have a loved one or someone that's gone astray and they're, and, they're, and they're lost, they're wandering around, all they have to do tonight is turn to God and God will be there. Amen. Amen. Even in the midst of darkness He will be there. Even where sin abounds, the grace of God will much more abound because God's grace is greater. Amen. Amen. He is the God of peace tonight. And as Paul writes this, uh, uh, closing words to the church, uh, giving them encouragement, uh, he says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Amen. Amen. And that statement really, really hit me uh, when I read this statement here throughout the last few days ago. And the Lord began to stir my heart. Uh, and he just began to speak to me about this phrase here because there's several things packed into this one verse. Uh, first of all, he's the God of peace. He's the God of peace. This we know through prophecy that his name would be called Wonderful Counselor and the Prince of Peace. This was Isaiah. We know that God sent his only begotten son so that there would be peace. Even the angels' announcement 
to the, the, the shepherds watching their flock by night was goodwill and peace towards men. Even the angelic announcement and prophecies being fulfilled was that the heart of God was that he wanted peace, uh, amen, coming to mankind. Because man did not know peace. It's been said, if you, if you know God, or uh, know God is no peace. N-O, know God, N-O, no peace. But if you know God, K-N-O-W, as you spell it, uh, then you will know peace. And how many people tonight do not know peace because they have no God in their life? Amen. Amen. They have no relationship with God. They have no faith in the idea of who God is. And they consequently, when you don't know the Lord, you don't know peace. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Just like if you, if, uh, how, how shall I say it? Just like if you've, uh, oh, we'll leave it alone. I'm going to make a joke about oh. some food or something, but we'll leave that alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. But no matter how bad things were, amen, there was still peace in Rome. And this was, this was God's, or Paul's encouragement to the people, the God of peace. God wants to bring peace tonight. And we know that there's, uh, there's peace with God and the peace of God. Peace with God comes through accepting the blood of Jesus Christ and from one turning from their wicked ways. Having the sin, uh, the sin sentence satisfied, the blood of Christ being applied to their life, uh, that's how we get peace with God. Amen. By, by coming into obedience of God's commands and God's word. Mankind tonight that is uh, uh, living in disobedience and living at odds with God, so to speak, they're enmity. They're, they're at enmity against God. Those walking in the flesh, those disobedient, they don't have peace with God. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day. He's angry with the wicked. But God extends, uh, uh, He extends His mercy. He extends His grace. Where if that individual, the wicked, whoever they might be, if they'd only repent, if they'd only turn from their wicked ways and repent of their sins and call upon God, God's anger will cease. And they'll find peace in the loving arms of God because when you're breaking the law of God, you can never have peace with God. But when, those, when the law is satisfied, when the terms are met, then we can have peace with God. Amen. Amen. And He's the God of peace that wants to bring peace, but we have to do it on God's terms, not our terms. Amen. Amen. We don't write the contract and fill in what we think the terms of the deal ought to be. Amen. God's already written the terms in this book here, 66 books, he's already given us a contract, a love letter. If we would just follow this Bible tonight, uh, it will be all right. Amen. Amen. If families would get back to the Bible, their Amen. family would stay together. Uh, if the city would get back to the principles of Almighty God, uh, Amen. Amen, there will be uh, more peace and there will be less war. If the country and nation as we know it, uh, when those that claim to swear on this Bible, if they were just open this Bible and begin to read what it actually says and follow what it actually dictates, then there will be peace. Then there will be unity. Then there will be the peace with God and consequently not only peace with God, the peace of God will come and fill the hearts and the minds of people and then we'll know and then we'll start living. Amen. Then we'll start living. Amen. I saw an image and that just came to my mind. You know, no matter who they are, you know, God help us. God help us. People do some bold things and swear on this Holy Bible, but yet don't do what that Holy Bible says. That is an offense to God. It's an offense to God. They, they, they'd be better off just swearing on some nursery book or something, or some child's book, uh, and then it'd be safer than to, than to swear on God's holy word yeah. Amen. and not do the things in His holy word. Amen. Amen. He's a God of peace. We want peace with God. We've got to do it God's way. Then there's the peace of God through walking in obedience and faith. When we live for the Lord, when we surrender to His will, we begin to, think, we begin to receive a peace uh, that passes all understanding. Is it possible to have peace tonight in the middle of, even as Paul would write to these Romans, even in the middle of a place where they were being persecuted, they were being 
harmed and even put to death for their faith in Christ, but yet here's Paul talking about the God of peace, the God of peace. Uh, you see, the believers in the early church, they knew peace. They knew what peace was. In the middle of a storm, they knew what peace was. The disciples learned this. We have to learn this too. As we go through storms of life, as we go through things, and we go through situations, the first, our first temptation or our first uh, inclination as human beings is to be afraid. Naturally, we want to be afraid. Naturally, we fear things that we don't understand, that we don't know. That's why the disciples were afraid when, when the storm came. Even though at one time Jesus was in the boat with them, and they were still afraid. Amen. Because Jesus was sleeping, and they thought he didn't care. But this was unknown territory to them. And we find that they had to learn that they, they, that they could put their trust in God no matter what the situation was. No matter how hard the wind was blowing, they could still trust the Lord because they were anchored. They had something to oh, keep God. them anchored, something to keep them stable, something to keep them from being blown all over the place. We need that tonight. Yes. And that's when we find the peace of God that will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. How is it that we have peace, the peace of God tonight, preacher? It's called being careful for nothing. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing. That means don't worry about anything. Amen. 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 Easier said than done, right, preacher? Yeah, don't worry about anything. Don't worry. Be happy. I can just be happy and not worry about anything. And no matter what comes my way and... Uh, things go falling apart around me or things looking looking dim and looking grim and God's word says don't be careful for anything yeah. that means don't be full of care don't worry he says be careful for nothing Amen. nothing Amen. Lord help us Amen. nothing he said Amen. what about this nothing Amen. don't be careful about it Amen. what about this thing that just happened nothing don't be careful about he said Nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, it's not just being carefree, but it's how we handle the situation that makes the difference. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, in everything that we do find ourselves in, he said, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto who? Unto God. Amen. Amen. Not your best friend, not your mommy, not your daddy, not, your, not this one, that one, or the other one. But he said, let your requests be made known unto God. you got to care. Don't let it worry you. Don't let it make you afraid. But by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, you take that thing before the throne Amen. of God. Amen. Amen. Make it a matter of prayer. Amen. Don't let it control you. Yes. You control it. And you take that care. You take that concern. And we all have real cares and concerns tonight. But he's saying you take these things and you bring it before God. Let your requests be made known unto God. God, I need you to do this. God, I'm concerned about that. God, I don't know what to do in this situation. And the Bible tells us when we do that, verse 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Something happens when we pray about it. Amen. Something happens when we let go and let God. Something happens when we don't let it allow, allow it to worry us, but we take that thing and bring it before God. We fall on our knees at an altar. Amen. We get to the faith zone. And if we're not at church, we find somewhere to pray. Amen. Lift up your life and rise to heaven and get to God and say, God, I need you to come on the scene. He's still God tonight. Amen. tonight. Amen. Amen. We don't have to go mucho loco in the cabeza. We don't have to go crazy. Lose our minds. We don't have to go off the deep end. We don't have to have a, 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 a panic attack. Amen. Amen. We're children of God tonight. And if you don't know God tonight, uh, listening online or however, all you have to do is taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Put your trust in Jesus. Let go of those things. Lay down the burden and ask the peace of God to come into your heart. 
Amen. And he said he would do something. The peace of God which passes understanding. You don't understand it. You're not going to understand it. Don't try to understand it. Don't try to figure out. But you give these things to God. And by faith you get up. And that peace that God gives will keep your heart. It will keep your mind. Yes. How? Through Christ Jesus. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. Amen. Because he today is the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The Bible tells us, Paul writing, the peace of God. The peace of God. You see, we, have, we can enjoy the peace of God while walking and living in obedience, while casting our cares upon Him. We can even enjoy peace with other people. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> we can even enjoy peace with other people tonight. Amen. With our brothers and sisters. Amen. <laughs> with husbands and wives. <laughs> Strangers, neighbors, people we know, people we don't know. We can enjoy the peace of God and peace with God. I like a verse in Romans chapter 12 verse 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. That's what the Bible tells us. And you wonder why Paul said that, if it be possible. <laughs> if it be possible. As much as lieth in you. I find that interesting. Yeah. Because if you if you could argue, well, I don't have it in me. <laughs> Therefore, I, I just can't I just can't be at peace or live peaceably with this person. Well, I believe God will help us to have it in us. Amen. Amen. I believe Jesus is good, great enough, and big enough to help us that that peace will be in us, amen, to be able to have peace with other people, amen. 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 If it be possible, amen, all things are possible to them that believe, amen. 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 There are those who lack peace tonight. They lack inner peace, inner calm, contentment that only Jesus can give. We're not meant to be burdened. This vessel that God wants to fill tonight, your body, your temple, which is a, which is a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit, is not meant to be a vessel full of care, full of worry, amen, to carry around uh, the stress and things above this world. We're meant to be vessels, uh, to, be, to be an habitation for God through the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Not filled with uh, worry, but filled with faith. Yeah. Not filled with stress, but filled with the joy of the Lord tonight. Uh, not burdened down, weighed down, and all stressed out about today, tomorrow, or last week, or next year, or whatever. But tonight, just giving it to God. God tells us in Joshua 1 and 9, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And you say amen to that tonight. Amen. Amen. Be strong and of what? Good courage. Be not afraid. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. John 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. And there's a list of so many other scriptures where God admonishes us to not be afraid. To let the peace of God keep your heart and mind. Don't be troubled about it. Don't be tempted to be afraid, worry, or complain. Because we have a God today who's got everything in control. Amen. Amen. He's got everything in His hand. Amen. He's the God of peace tonight. And He's able to give us a peace that passes all understanding. And I like what He says following up with that. The God of peace shall do what? God's going to do something tonight. Amen. Amen. And Paul was right near the Romans. And he said, the God of peace. Oh yeah, He'll give you peace. And there's a God of peace. And we can enjoy all those benefits. But there's one tonight that God amen, doesn't have peace with. And that's Satan. Amen. Amen. And he said the God of peace is going to bruise Satan under your feet Amen. shortly. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. God's going to do something tonight. Amen. Because God's not going to be, amen, bullied by the devil. Amen. God's still got it all in control. Amen. I've already read the back of the book. And we know who the winners are tonight. Those on God's side are on the winning side. Those who have Jesus are on the winning side. Those that pray are on the winning side. Amen. Those that walk in faith are on the winning 
side. God's going to do something. He's going to bruise Satan under our feet shortly. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, what does this mean here? As powerful as this scripture is, Paul was reminding the Roman believers that God has the final authority. That God, amen, will strike the final blow against the enemy of our soul. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Who is this king? The psalmist David asked. Who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Yeah. He's a God of peace, but he's also a God of war and a God of battle tonight. And he will not allow the enemies of the church and the enemies of his kingdom to prevail as Jesus already declared long ago, that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. This God of peace, amen, will not always strive with man. The Bible says, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. Genesis 6 and 3, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. There is coming a day. Amen. That God will judge the earth. Uh, there is coming a time where this God of peace, uh, amen, will take those that have peace with Him home to be secure in heaven. But those who are at odds with God, He will have to enforce His word. He will have to enforce His judgment. Uh, and this we know. We don't want to be caught on the losing end tonight. Uh, we don't want to be caught on the side of Satan this evening uh, because Satan's going to be bruised uh, for the last time. Uh, amen. Under our feet, the Bible says. Uh, do we have a promise? Do we have hope? Do we have a word tonight that God said He would take care of Satan? Do we have something to hold on to this evening? Yes, we do. Amen. Even the prophecy from Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, 14 and 15, where God cursed the serpent. And He said, You're cursed above all cattle, cursed above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Yeah. Verse 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Yeah. We, we know this tonight to be a double reference, uh, not just to the fact that the seed of mankind will walk on serpents, uh, bruise the head of serpents, and the serpent would bite the heel of mankind, uh, but also the seed. Amen. We're talking about a greater seed tonight, uh, the seed that would come in the form of Jesus Christ. Uh, this seed would one day come and bruise, uh, amen, and crush the head, amen, of, of Satan himself. Uh, would Satan bite Christ? Yes. Uh, would his heel be bitten? Yes. Uh, amen. But that, that heel, amen, that bitten heel, uh, we know our Lord recovered from it uh, because he was stung by death, uh, but he won the victory over death, yeah. hell, and the grave uh, yeah. upon the cross. Uh, and when he rose again, uh, amen, he punched the the devil and he put the devil right in his place amen. when he received the power and the keys to the kingdom amen of almighty God amen. and we know that this reference amen. here he will be bruised one final time because there is a day coming shortly and we don't know when that will be where Satan will be locked up amen for eternity he'll do a thousand year stint in the bottomless or the, or in, the, in, the, in the bottomless pit but you know what after that stint is up. Uh, amen. He'll be put and cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. Amen. God's already written it in his book. Uh, yeah. Amen. God's going to bruise Satan shortly. Uh, yeah. Amen. Whether it's this week, next week or not, I don't know. But we know it's going to happen. Glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. This is the hope that he was giving to the church. Uh, the devil has already lost tonight. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. amen. Yeah. Where is he? Yeah. He should be under your feet. Yeah. Not on your head, not in your mind, not in your thoughts, not like a monkey riding your back. Amen. Amen. Where is Satan tonight? Amen. He should be under our feet. Yes. Under our feet. Amen. And nowhere else. And the Bible says, listen to the words, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan where? Now he didn't say under his feet. But see, God will bruise Satan under your feet. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. It would be our feet through the, through the Christian walk yes. and through our obedience 
that God would enable us to be the ones that brew Satan and win the victory over the devil and win victory over temptation. Amen. Amen. Why? Because when God works through us, uh, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And God will bruise Satan surely through un what? under our feet. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 It's the believers. We enjoy the victory tonight. Amen. Amen. The battle is the Lord, but the victory is ours. Amen. Amen. It's not... He's not to be anywhere else but under our feet tonight yeah. at the very lowest place, amen, where God intended him to be. And we know this is true. And we know that this is coming to pass because the grace of God, yes. the grace of God, although sin abounds, we know the grace of God does much more abound. Yes. And he said here, the God of, he said, and ending these words, I'll read it to you, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Yes. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. We are what we are tonight by the grace of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Lord said by the Lord said to Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul said, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And is it not the power of Christ working in us and through us that gives us that victory to enjoy as we live for God? Amen. Amen. As we learn to lean on Him, as we learn to trust this God of peace and the word of promise that He gave, God's going to bruise Satan under our feet yeah. shortly. Amen. Amen. Shortly. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. We have the encouragement of God's word tonight that Satan will be bruised. What that bruise entails, you can, you can probably say a lot of things, but you know what? There's going to be a bruise, one final bruise, one final blow to the enemy of our soul that he will not recover from amen. once and for all. Yes. Because God, amen, he is the Lord of battle. Yes. He is strong and mighty. Yes. No matter what man might do, no matter what people may think they're getting away with, there's a God of peace who will be a God of judgment. And he leaves us with his grace, the grace to keep us, the grace to, amen, strengthen us. Paul said, I most gladly, therefore. Paul had an attitude change. I want the power of Christ to rest upon me. And he knew the only way for the power of Christ to rest upon him was to surrender to the will and the plan of God and allow the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to be sufficient in his life. We pray sometimes, more grace. <laughs> more grace, Lord. Amen. You ever prayed that, God? More Amen. grace. I need more grace. But you know what? We need more than grace, too. We need some grit. Amen. Amen. We do need some grit. We do need some strength. We do need some courage. Yes. Amen. We do need the power of God in our lives. Amen. Amen. We can have all that. We can rest upon God's promise tonight. Amen. 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 Talking about the peace of God, or the God of peace. How is it that God has spoken to you? And what do you need tonight from the Lord? Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer tonight. As we know our God is great, and He's greatly to be praised. Let's give Him glory. Father, tonight, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love and your mercy and your power. We thank you tonight for this opportunity to be in your house. And God, we ask your blessing right now as we, as we seek your face, as we seek, Lord, your presence and your will to be done in this service, Lord. We ask you, Father, to move right now, Lord, in this altar call. God, bless, strengthen, meet the need, Lord, of your people. Help us, Lord, to be careful for nothing, yes. but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto you. And Lord, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Do you need some peace tonight, church? Do you need some help tonight? Uh, let's bring it before God tonight. These altars are open for prayer. Let's bring it before His throne tonight. Yes. This faith zone is open. Let's just begin to seek Him and ask God to do what only He can do tonight in this service right now. Father, we thank You. We bless You. And Lord, have Your way. Have Your way, Lord.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. Lord, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you for the power of your word, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the reality of serving you. Christ, Lord. Give strength and give glory, Lord. We pray and we thank you, Lord, for your grace, Lord, that is sufficient, your grace that is amazing, your grace, Lord God, that keeps us each and every day. Father, thank you tonight for the reality in serving you. Oh God, continue to have your way. Have your way with your church. Have your way with your people. Minister, Lord, and move in a very special way, Lord, we pray. In these days to come, Lord, throughout this weekend, we pray that your will be done, Lord. Have your way. Draw men and women, God. Touch your people. Bring healing, God. Bring comfort, Lord. Bring strength, we pray, to the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you our prayer. It's been good to be in church tonight. Amen. Amen. It's been good to be in church tonight. If you go with the Lord, and the Lord will do what? Go with you. Go with you. Amen. And amen. Amen. We'll see you next time in the house of the Lord. Don't forget, pray for services this weekend. Pray for our speaker coming, our assistant general overseer, Reverend Devonshire, will be here Sunday morning. By the grace of God, he's riding in circuit. Like the most circuit preachers used to ride on a horse from town to town. He's probably in a car, I think, and making his way this way to preach, to help us, to encourage us, to fellowship with us. So be in prayer. Amen. We'll see you next time in the house of the Lord. God bless you, and good night.